You have probably heard that omega-3s are essential for brain health. Your doctor might have even told you to take fish oil. But did you know that most omega-3s in supplements never even make it to your brain? You could be taking fish oil every day, thinking you're supporting your memory, focus, and mood, when in reality, your brain might be getting almost nothing. Here's the problem. Not all omega-3s take the same path to the brain. Some get lost in digestion, some get stored as fat, and only one form is designed to cross the blood-brain barrier efficiently. Do you know which one? In this video, I'm going to show you the science, and I have the receipts to prove it. You'll see the fastest, most effective way to get omega-3s into your neurons, and how to tell if your omega-3 supplement is actually fueling your mind. But first, I'm not going to tell you to like and subscribe. That's not going to help you. But I guarantee you're going to hear something you've never heard before. So I'm going to suggest that you scroll over to the save video to a playlist and bookmark this video so that when you're eating a hamburger and you think people used to get their omega-3s from cow brains to support mental health, you can come back to this video, scroll down, and see the scientific journal and make sure I didn't make all this up. I promise receipts. But here's the real question. Why do most omega-3s fail to reach the brain. Why would that be the case? It's because the different forms of omega-3s are literally different molecules, and the body treats each one differently, and I'll show you. Your brain is protected by the blood-brain barrier. It decides what gets in and what stays out. It is very picky and very selective. Even essential nutrients like omega-3s don't get automatic access. Only specific forms that have the right credentials can actually enter and fuel your neurons. It's like a gate agent at a sporting event, scanning each ticket before allowing a fan to enter. So which omega-3s have the golden ticket and which ones are getting left outside? Cow brains have Ticketmaster on their phone. They get in, seriously. In the late 1980s, several studies investigated the use of phosphatidylserine, or PS, derived from bovine cortex, as a treatment for cognitive decline, depression, memory loss, and other mental health conditions. These early studies showed promise, suggesting that PS from cow brains, or bovine cortex, could improve memory, cognition, and even mood in aging individuals. Researchers were optimistic that this could be a breakthrough in mental health and neurodegenerative conditions. But just as interest in phosphatidylserine was growing, enter mad cow disease. And practically overnight, bovine-derived phosphatidylserine was pulled from the market, forcing scientists to search for alternatives. So what did they do? Researchers swapped bovine PS for another form of PS, this time from soy and sunflower. But there was a catch. They didn't see the same improvement they, they did with PS from bovine cortex. Studies on the efficacy of these plant-derived PS supplements didn't have the same results. One study found in older adults that were taking PS from soy that there was no improvement in memory. And another study found no significant cognitive improvements in participants taking soy-derived PS after 12 weeks. So while phosphatidylserine from bovine cortex had the VIP ticket, phosphatidylserine from vegetable sources went to the wrong venue entirely. Why would that be? It's because plant-based PS is a different molecule. It's a different composition. Instead of containing a mix of saturated and polyunsaturated fats like DHA, it was mostly saturated fat. Turns out the secret sauce wasn't phosphatidylserine at all. It was the omega-3 fatty acids like DHA and EPA. This makes sense. The human body has a limited capacity to synthesize the omega-3 fatty acids eicosapentaenoic acid, or EPA, and docosahexaenoic acid, DHA. While we can convert alpha-lanoic acid, or ALA, a plant-based omega-3, into EPA and DHA, this process is very inefficient, with conversion rates often below 5%. Consequently, the majority of EPA and DHA in our bodies are obtained through dietary sources, primarily oily fish or supplements. Omega-3 fatty acids like DHA and EPA are polyunsaturated fatty acids. They have a structure that keeps membranes from becoming stiff. They're bent and crooked. So when you pack them in, it makes the neuronal cell membranes flexible to work properly. Neurons send messages to your brain and the outer layer needs to be fluid so signals can pass quickly and efficiently. 
Without enough omega-3s, membranes can become rigid, slowing down brain function and making it harder for neurons to send signals. PS from soy contains saturated fatty acids. They're stiff and packed together. Omega-3 supplementation was already widespread, but for cardiovascular support. Research on omega-3 fatty acids for mental health began to emerge with several studies suggesting potential benefits. In 1999, a study investigated individuals taking omega-3s found that supplementation led to significant improvement in depressive symptoms. And another study in elderly patients found that fish consumption decreased the risk of dementia. These early findings were encouraging and spurred further research into the role of omega-3s in mental health. Many studies have shown that omega-3s may have beneficial effects on mood disorders and could play a role in the prevention of psychotic disorders. Now, this is great if you like salmon and tuna, but if you don't eat fish, supplementation is the only option. But how do you know which omega-3 supplements actually get the omega-3s into the brain? Think of it like this. If the blood-brain barrier is like a gate agent at a sporting event, then the omega-3 fatty acids are like the fans that want to get into the stadium for the big event. We all know there are different types of fans. Free fatty acids are fans without a ticket. They show up, but security won't let them in. And sometimes they go to the wrong stadium too. Omega-3s in free fatty acid form must be taken with food. They need to be emulsified by the bile to be absorbed during digestion. If you take it on an empty stomach, you are wasting all of it. These fans scalped a ticket that wasn't even a valid ticket. Omega-3 fatty acids that are in triglyceride form are like a massive dedicated mob. They have a chance of getting in, but only if enough of them push through together. This is why you often hear that people should take three or four grams of fish oil for cognitive support. The blood-brain barrier will not allow triglycerides to cross, but it can be overwhelmed. Also, a small fraction of triglycerides will go to the liver, remove their belt and shoes, and then they'll be allowed to enter with a ticket. And, and what happens when there's a continual mob on a security line? Eventually, security beefs up and less of the mob gets in as time goes on. And if you do the math, if you took four grams of fish oil every day for a year, that's more mass than the entire brain. So obviously, all of it is not getting there. You might be wondering, I take fish oil. Is it in triglyceride or free fatty acid? Think about it. Do you know which form of omega-3 is in your current supplement? Don't feel bad. Most people don't. Many fish oil supplements don't clearly identify the form of the omega-3 on the label. Phospholipids are another form of omega-3s. Phospholipids are the fans with the tickets, but they still have to go through security screening and they have to remove their belt and their shoes and it slows them down. Some of them get discouraged and lost. Remember phosphatidylserine, cow brains and sunflowers? Some innovators took omega-3s bound to phospholipids from krill and through a patented enzymatic technology, swapped out the PC for PS, making cow brains from shrimp. But it worked, sort of. In 2014, some clinicals showed that a medical food called Viarin with PSEPA and PSDHA was helpful for people with ADHD. My son was diagnosed with ADHD in 2017. We knew omega-3s were important, and he took Viarin. PSDHA was also clinically evaluated for improving early memory impairment, and people showed improvements in immediate and delayed memory recall. Phospholipids definitely had the tickets, but the people turning shrimp into cow brains stopped doing it in 2019. Now we're going to get to the omega-3 with the VIP tickets. It wasn't until 2014 that it was discovered who was the head of security for the blood-brain barrier. A study in Nature identified the critical transporter that transports DHA across the blood-brain barrier, the MFSD2A receptor. This study also identified the specific omega that is actually transported across the blood-brain barrier into the neuron, lysophosphatidylcholine, or LPC. Omega-3s bound to LPC have a VIP ticket into the brain. Security literally grabs LPC by the hand and escorts it through the line, through the membrane, and into the neuron. They get to keep their shoes on, their belts on, they get to bypass all the others. Researchers discovered something even more surprising about omega-3 absorption that explained everything. In 2019, a study showed that DHA in LPC form led to significant increase in brain DHA levels, while triglyceride and phospholipid had minimal DHA brain accretion. 
This study finally explained what researchers have been trying to figure out for decades. The big headline here is, some omega-3 supplements don't provide consumers the mental health benefits they expected because the majority of the omega-3s aren't going to the brain. They're going to Oedipus, heart, and muscle tissue. This is also probably a good time to point out that not all omega-3 supplements are meant for brain support. If you're taking omega-3s for heart health, your team is not playing at this stadium. That's okay. With so many omega-3 options, it's no wonder people don't know which one they should take. Honestly, in my experience, having talked to hundreds of psychiatrists, pediatricians, and neurologists, most of them don't know there are different forms of omega-3 fatty acids and the form can make a material impact on their patient's well-being. Do you want to know what fish oil they would recommend? I'll tell you. Nordic Naturals. It's a high-quality supplement and probably what I would take if I were taking omega-3s for heart health. Why wouldn't doctors know this? Most medical practitioners have never even heard of the MFSD2A receptor. It was only discovered in 2014, well after most of them graduated medical school, and the diverging paths of the different forms of omega-3s was only discovered in 2019. This research is groundbreaking and still very young. So far, we've learned that this LPC transport system is critical for maintaining brain lipid balance meaning without it, the brain struggles to get the omega-3s it needs. It's also been shown that even before birth, LPC is essential for delivering long-chain omega-3s to the developing fetal brain, reinforcing its fundamental role in brain growth. The MFSD2A receptor is also highly expressed on the retina, and studies have shown that elevated retinal DHA levels are associated with improved visual outcomes. So if you're taking omega-3s for vision support, LPC has a VIP ticket there too. So what's the takeaway? This new research empowers you. You can pick which omega-3 you need so that you can target the area you need support most. And for the first time ever, there's an omega-3 specifically targeted for the brain. I would not be surprised if in 10 years from now, LPC is the only omega-3 fatty acid taken for brain health. Personally, I eat sushi, a lot of sushi. I can't get myself to eat sardines, but if we all ate real foods and vegetables, the supplement industry would substantially shrink and cater to those with genetics that make absorption of those nutrients more challenging. But if you don't like raw fish, omega-3 fatty acids are essential nutrients. They are the literal building blocks of the neuron. They support heart health, joint health, and brain health. What do you take omega-3s for? Let me know in the comments. If you're looking for cognitive support, it might make sense to take an omega-3 that actually reaches your neurons. And LPC is the superior form and the science proves it. So if you want your omega-3s to go to the brain, become a super fan and get the VIP ticket. Skip the security line, keep your belt and shoes on, and walk right in. The only LPC ingredient on the market is Lysoveta LPC. Ocker Biomarine have been the pioneers in researching and developing this ingredient over the last 10 years. The FDA approved their NDI, or their new dietary ingredient submission, in August 2023, which showed the, the safety of this ingredient. Phoenix Health Science sells the VIP ticket, and Accentrate Omega contains Lysoveta LPC. In full disclosure, I'm the chief science officer for Phoenix Health Science. But knowing what I know about the science, I had to make sure that Phoenix's products contained Lysoveta. I wanted the VIP ticket for myself. I wanted it so much, I was at the packager when it was being bottled, and I was the first person to take Accentrate Omega. In the last 12 years, I have helped develop dozens of products. This is the only one I thought significant enough to see into the end zone. Seven days after taking Lysoveta, I noticed significant improvements in one area of my mental health. That's a story for another time. We'll leave you with what I found most surprising since launching Accentrate with Lysoveta. The APOE4 allele is the strongest genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. This allele is associated with impaired lipid metabolism, reduced brain DHA levels, and increased neuroinflammation. Carriers of this gene have a reduced ability to transport DHA across the blood-brain barrier. I didn't know this when we started down this path, but after Accentrate Omega with Lysoveta was launched, by far, the most inquiries to us were from people with the APOE4 allele or people doing research related to it. And I'm sure there's more to come on that front. But now you know why most omega-3s never reach your brain and exactly what to do about it.